Discard the doctrine, but hold on to the sacred. And what is sacred? What makes something sacred? To me, that means the presence of God. So a church built on an ancient Druid site has had people going there, seeking God, seeking the presence of God, and often attaining the presence of God in that place. And it's a sacred place. You know, I think we've got to be careful not to get rid of that opportunity to have a sacred space. But it doesn't have to be a church. It can be your own home. I consider my house a sacred space. All the times here that I've had the presence of God and also intend in this video to bring the presence of God, allow the presence of God with me during this video. Silence is quite a good place to have some sacred space, but it doesn't have to be silent. There are obviously some noises that would make it very difficult to keep the sacred space, keep the presence of God. Where are we now? August the 10th or something. Sunday. No, it's the 11th. And um, in the middle of the seven day warning, perhaps, for the 17th of August. Is that the closing of the door? I don't know. I do know that the rapture is what happens to individuals when they bring God into their life. They are saved. But we're all saved. Like, even if someone doesn't manage it in this lifetime, they'll do it in the next. So is there a cut-off period for humanity. Not at all, but maybe some forms of human will get stuck in the past like we still have lower animals on the earth. Still existing. Still a necessary part of this world. So we could have a division like that where some people kind of evolve and some people don't. But that would just be the physical form. And as new souls enter the earth into evolved forms of human with parents who will allow their child's progress then we'll be living lives knowing God, having God's presence with us. But we don't need all this doctrine, this Nicene Creed to stop a bunch of different Christian versions warring with each other. And that was probably all necessary in that time for God's plan. But we don't need the doctrine now. Anyone who reads the Bible from cover to cover will get confused <laughs> and be thinking, well, hang on a minute, I thought God was nice. <laughs> I mean, even in the first few chapters of Genesis, it changes. So you have to use your discernment. The answers aren't just in a book. The answers aren't just going to be given to you. You have to seek to find. 
every individual will find it for themselves and then they can say they know or they will say they know in their heart they feel it deep down they know this truth and they will hold on to it even in the face of death they will hold on to that which they feel they know because it suddenly becomes more important it takes over your life that is to be raptured that is to be caught up Donald Trump reminds me of a Native American Indian. I don't know what, there isn't the right word for to call them all together because there are lots of different tribes. He's got some of that blood in him, I'm absolutely sure of it. We had the so-called midnight cry. What happened on the day before, 8th of 8th, the 8th of August? There were a couple of shootings, weren't there? One of them was a lefty, so now you've got people on that side doing the mass shootings as well. I just say I'm glad we don't have a lot of guns in this country, although we've got a problem with knives. That is a lot simpler to deal with, except the EU have allowed the Italian Mafia to spread throughout Europe. And uh, hopefully with Brexit on the horizon, we can crack down and get these Mafia out of this country. We don't need two, do we? Like, we need the police and the Mafia if they're a protection racket. We don't need one or the other. <laughs> so then we had 9th of August that was the the day according to Pearl Caleri and you know she's definitely got something but setting dates has always been a difficult problematic thing I declared the end of the world in 2013 to all my friends on Facebook and stuff because I would rather have warned than not warned. And who knows, perhaps all these warnings that people have been making have helped, have helped people think about it. Think about the world they're in. Ignore what they've been told from the parents and school and work and government. Actually look at what they know, the dreams they've had feelings they've had. Think about repentance and forgiveness. There's nothing about repentance and forgiveness on the physical level. It's a feeling. To forgive, feel the hurt done to you. or even hurt done to somebody else that in terms hurt you too. You need to feel what's been done to you to forgive. You forgive them for it by trying to understand them a bit better. Put yourself in their shoes for a moment and you can forgive. And do everything with love, everything with love. It's this symbiotic relationship we have with the one love, the source. We are with love, do things with love.
and repenting is obviously a feeling where you think about things that you did which you knew were wrong or you've learned that definitely are wrong so you can't always be sure you have to go into it deeply and feel it and you know it's wrong you repent you are sorry that you did it God's already forgiven you you got to forgive yourself so repenting is forgiving yourself sincerely these are all feelings nothing to do with your physical body and through this process you're able to bring yourself back into a condition that you were in when you came into the world because whatever happened in your previous lives scores would have been settled before you came into a new life there's no one here with a life that is supposed to be punishment for them for a previous life it will start with a clean slate and we all have some hard shit during our life we all have something to overcome Everyone is different. You only know what you know. You only know your life. So you can only concentrate on what you know. First hand experience. There's enough there for you. Yeah, I'm making a video. Yeah, I'm actually making a video. Don't swear on my video, please. My 12 year old son <laughs> going through phases. He's alright. He wants something, I'm sure. So he can wait. So, yeah. These things are feelings, nothing to do with the physical body. could say you're eternal, but I've, I can't see more than a hundred billion years ahead <laughs> at all. I, I'll give you a hundred billion years, that's probably long enough to be you. And there's all this, always balance involved because of this symbiotic relationship, symbiotic relationships everywhere. You and your parents, you and your soulmate, you and love. But you're there, you're something, you're, you are a universe. Not as big as the universe we're in. This is our parents' universe. And its hugeness, its vastness gives us an idea of how big God is. But we're not that small. God has been nurturing us for four billion years. It's like a, a pregnancy. We've been in the womb and this is the awakening. It will seem scary. A little bit of courage a little bit of faith and you'll be fine balance be into your story but not too much but be into your story it's your life to live Allow the presence of God to make your space sacred.
love. Love what comes. That's what you do with love. You feel something with love. <laughs> I had another analogy of my soulmate. It's a pretty basic one. That basic, dead obvious. She's right here on my right. I've got different analogies of how I can picture feelings in a sense of feelings being everything, the top dimension, the soul, where I really am. Me and my soulmate, we are a universe. She's the substance and I'm the light. Uh, I think we have, we have a planet, we have a garden. I've seen it. I've been there. It feels amazing. The power these understandings have is on your own existence. If you think about the things we do to find satisfaction, but it's always a millisecond away with God, Jesus, our mother and father. If you keep going to the Bible to guide your life, yes, God could well be in there many times, guiding your thumb to a page and a sentence that brings some meaning to your situation, and a positive one. But there's going to be, if you read the whole Bible, and if you're truly finding random parts of the Bible. There's some odd stuff in there as well. It's the wheat and chaff. You've got to use your own brain. You've been given a brain for a reason. Understand that when these things were written, they were written by men. And at times they would have been channeling God or good spirits at least but they weren't perfect were they they were still taking an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth at stages they devastated the land with their herding of animals everybody was just having as many animals as they could and that was a sign of their wealth. They've turned most of that land into desert because of overgrazing. So there's no way they were perfect. And Yeshua came and things got better and his message, love your enemy and love your neighbor as yourself and his parables, how things grow, and goodness, and righteous, and healing, and faith, and marriage.
but it still wasn't, still hasn't been practiced fully. Gets turned and twisted. A whole lot of other stuff that gets added afterwards. Conjecture. Paul is wise, but throughout his letters he, he deteriorates. Starts talking about men should have their hair short. And there's a puzzle about who the writer of the fourth gospel was. Excellent gospel though. There's also Gnostic texts which we should include, should we? The Book of Enoch. How many people believe that vision in the third Book of Enoch, you know, was written right at the beginning? And not after the fact, in a sense. So not a vision, just another story. Stories, people tell stories. There's wisdom in stories. The answers are inside you. In your life. What God has shown you in dreams. For some of you, extrasensory perceptions have begun. And we are capable of communicating directly with God on a feeling base, using your heart, soul, that thing which forgives and repents. That thing which is your awareness, that's you. Where your wants and desires are. And you want to be satisfied. And you will only ever be satisfied when you recognize that you are in God. And we are in Mother God first. The feeling on the seat of your bum, that's your connection with Mother God. And all around you. And there's Father God. different analogies, different pictures of how it fits together. Mother God can be in Father God. Mother God can be sitting next to Father God. But Father God has a way straight into your heart, through the crown of your head. Make your space a sacred space with the presence of God. And feel everything with love. Because it's always the best response. If you want to learn and grow, Play in love.
the birth pangs of our awakening have been felt by all. And we were warned so as we could endure it and know that. There's a light coming. Could be three days away. <laughs> that um, the culmination of God's plan through this rocky period is done. But for the individual Time is always now. So get it now.